Next on BYUSN, what now for BYU men's basketball? Are the Cougars headed for a fifth place finish or worse in the West Coast Conference? And where does Fred Warner rank among the all-time greats from Cougars in the NFL? Great question and a great show ahead. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Monday, January 23rd. I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. Only one of us have our favorite team still in the NFL playoffs. I have my favorite team on my shirt as well. On today's <laughs> show, Tyler Haas discusses the Cougars' tough road, uh, road swing in the Bay Area. Volleyball freshman Trent Moser was awesome this weekend. He'll make his Studio B debut. A new Mr. Triple Double emerges. And which former Cougars most likely to go all Shannon Sharp at a game? Lots of candidates. Mm. Here are today's headlines. Cougars in the NFL repping in the divisional playoffs. Head coach Andy Reid of the Kansas City Chiefs nice. headed back to the AFC Championship. They'll host the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday. And we just mentioned the fabulous Fred Warner. All pro Fred and the San Francisco 49ers advance to the NFC Championship at Philadelphia. Warner had nine tackles, a tackle for loss, a pass breakup, an interception, and a 16-yard return on that pick against the Cowboys. How about them, Kent? Nope, they left. Men's hoops lose to San Francisco 82-74 despite shooting almost 51%. Rudy Williams led the Cougars with a season-high 28 points all off the bench. Coach Mark Pope was disappointed in his performance. So we got really good players, and we have, um, and, 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 and these guys compete, and they want to get better, and they want to win, but we've taken a major, major step back, and that's 100% me. And, you know, i got to get my act together and find out uh, some answers because it, that just is, we should never have a performance like that ever, ever, mm. ever, 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 ever. Looks like Mark Pope recently read the book Extreme Ownership. Yeah. Uh, the Cougars host St. Mary's Saturday night, special BYUSN game day ahead of the game on ESPN2 and BYU Radio at 9 Eastern Saturday night. Tall task to hopefully avoid a three-game losing streak. BYU women's basketball had their win streak snapped, losing to Santa Clara 69-59. Ending the seven-game victory streak, Nani Falatea led the team with 20 points, her second straight 20-point performance and third of the season. Lauren Gusson with her 19th double-double in 20 games this season, 14 points, 15 rebounds in a losing effort. Bounce-back opportunity at St. Mary's this Thursday, 9.30 Eastern. Number 13 men's volleyball sweeps fairly Dickinson two nights in a row, Friday, Saturday, thanks to outstanding performances from Capona Brown, Luke Benson, and freshman Trent Moser, who played for the injured uh, Mix Ramones. Moser hit 579, 11 kills Saturday night. Cougars 4 0 play Wednesday and Friday this week at number seven UC Irvine. Track and field at the Ralph Lindemann Invitational. The men's and women's relay teams sweep the 4x400 and end with six individual event wins. Adobe Tabubo clocked in with 8.3 seconds in the 60 meter hurdles, putting her in first. That time also secures her the number five all-time uh, performance at BYU in that event. Gymnastics posts a 195-475 Friday night to beat Boise State, led by Rebecca Ripley's 9925 on floor and Anissa Alvarado's 9925 on bars. The Cougars are at Utah State Friday night. Eric Mika in the NBA G League records a triple-double in a 114-107 Ignite win over the Vipers. Mika had 16 points, 18 rebounds, and 12 assists. Wow, Kyle Collinsworth is impressed. Print the hoodies. And Ashley Hatch scores the game winner for the USA women's national team in a 5-0 route against World Cup host New Zealand, marking her fifth goal with the team and over six months since her last start. Is she going to make that World Cup roster? We'll we hope. discuss later. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. What's Trending presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. BYU men's basketball drops a second straight. Tough <sighs> road swing in the Bay Area. They currently sit fifth in the West Coast Conference. Jerem. It's time to leave the league. That's what I say. Will BYU men's basketball finish higher, lower, or exactly the same at number five as they go into Las Vegas and the West Coast Conference Tournament? Feels like fifth or sixth. Uh, yeah, at four and four right now. Ugh. Last year, BYU was nine and six and in fifth place going into Vegas. Made the NIT, made a nice run in the NIT, right? Nearly making uh, MSG in the last year. By the way, the NIT Final Four this year is at the Orleans. So do you even want to make a run in the NIT? BYU will have uh, worn out their welcome in that gym. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, you go back the last couple of years and what fifth looked like, what record, right? 2019-20, um, right before the pandemic. Fifth was 9-7. and 2018-19, yep. fifth was 8-8. Eight and eight. Just cruising in for that uh, that kind of mark here. They're certainly going to get some home games against 
St. Mary's and uh, LMU and Santa Clara that San Francisco. you'd like to think BYU takes care of business at home. But they're still at St. Mary's. They're still at Gonzaga sitting mm -hmm. there as well. And they're still at Pepperdine, which has been uh, the bane of BYU's existence in the WCC outside of the St. Zaga, which St. Fran Zaga isn't a phrase we're using this year because San Francisco's not that good, but still got the kooks. It's tough, Spence, because we, expe we didn't expect this team per se to be like, top three given what we've seen but they went on a nice run where they had won seven in a row they won eight of ten and it was like okay maybe BYU can be that third team if BYU beats Gonzaga then maybe they are that third place team and potentially in fourth yes uh but unfortunately did not yeah, and happen. and this this team has some real skill in certain areas defensively has been pretty good this season but on Saturday, it's tough. You let San Francisco do what San Francisco does. They make 12 threes. They get to the line a gajillion times um, in this game. What was it? 27 times. They go 24, 27. The free throw line was the difference. The turnovers are obviously an issue, but it's part of sort of the makeup of tempo with this team on offense. So it's, it's tough. Um, and, and I wonder about any long-term effects. Two, two things come to mind. Long-term effects of going into the Big 12 next year. Like, if BYU didn't have a great season this year, let's say BYU doesn't make the NIT this year. That's rough, right? Um, and then last year, you were in the NIT, good enough, not, not great, not very good, but good enough, right, um, to make the NIT and go on a little run. But if this year you don't even make the NIT, which is BYU's pacing for, um, hopefully they make it, um, but, and then you go into the Big 12, and let's just assume year one is a massive learning curve. It's tough. It's, it's tough the next couple of years. Like, Mark Pope owned it. He, he and the staff certainly have some work to do to ensure that uh, BYU's in a good place in the Big 12. And uh, you don't want to roll into that league and for a couple of years not make the NCAA tournament or the NIT. If BYU doesn't make the NIT multiple years, then, then change will be called for, right? Um, and you don't, I love Mark Pope, but I don't, I don't want to be thinking about that in the next couple of years of like, oh shoot, now we got to figure something out. We're not at that mm. stage yet. I'm just saying there is concern that this year going into next year could be tough. Like, that next year is a, would be a huge year for everybody. This team has shown us who they are time and again. Yeah. You we are what we you should do. believe them, right? We should believe them. And what is this team? They'll play hard. They will defend to the last second. They will turn the ball over way more than the coaching staff and every fan wants and certainly the team wants. And it is a thorn in BYU's side. This team is capable of hanging with and beating any team on their schedule and capable of playing down to the level and losing to any team on the schedule. Case in point, South Dakota, the peak of BYU's powers, winning against a depleted Creighton team and Dayton team, and probably the Utah game is the high point of the season, right? Yeah. Those are nice wins. Not One point loss to Gonzaga, I can't call a peak because it's a loss. But we saw uh, the potential that BYU has in that type of game at home with all the juice flowing and the Marriott Center and the Rock going crazy. Like, yeah. we've seen what BYU is capable of doing. But that's the high. Like, yes. And we've seen the low. BYU is somewhere in the middle, which is uh, right now a pretty mediocre team, unfortunately. He, you, we want BYU to be better. Um, th they certainly have to recruit at a higher level. Um, and they've got some skill in it. And they're young, right? There's only two players who... Uh, run out of eligibility on this team and Rudy Williams and Gideon George, which brings me to this. Is it time to put Rudy Williams back in the starting lineup as a mix-up uh, amidst this time? Why, why not? What, what I, does BYU have to lose? <laughs> right? You're, play, you're trying to play to get into the NIT at this point, and you have been for probably a month. Um, I, I'm not opposed to it because I think Rudy Williams has done everything he's been asked. Is he better because he's off the bench? I think that's just a thing we're saying to justify it. I, I don't know. I don't think it matters who starts at that position per se, but I do think maybe Rudy gives you a shot out of the gate a little differently offensively. Um, defensively, BYU's been good, right? BYU's they play hard. They, they, they play hard, Jerem. 82 allowed is, is too high, right? But maybe it's time. I don't know. Um, I'm just thinking of what do you mix up from a personnel standpoint? Also, Trevin Nell should redshirt. Don't come back during this year. I, I've been saying it for a few weeks, but at this point, officially, what's the point yes. in this season? Like, stay in a red shirt for Trevin Nell. Um, BYU's got to get a couple of dudes um, that are better than anybody else on the roster to add to this group next year. And hopefully you retain the, the quality that you've gained. Like, I like the sort of trajectory of Jackson Robinson. Remember, he's young. He's like, he's a young, he's a sophomore. Foose is he's still got, relatively young. Foose is a sophomore, yeah. 
there's there's some nice pieces you can add to this and be competitive pretty quickly in, in the future. Hopefully, BYU can salvage something, win a game in Vegas, make the NIT, and we go, okay, that was good enough. If you don't make the NIT, that's never good enough. BYU 4-4 four and four through their first eight games in conference. It is the halfway point of West Coast Conference play, and you still have to play St. Mary's twice and Gonzaga, yeah. and Santa Clara's coming to Provo, and as you mentioned, you got to go on the road to Pepperdine. It's too much. LMU coming here it's too. It's too much yeah. to ask this BYU team to go five and three. I think in the back eight. Yeah. Four and four feels like okay. It's probably where they're going to be an eight and eight record in conference, and BYU goes eighteen and thirteen in the regular season. Yes. I picked them to go nineteen and twelve. They're and Mark Pope has told us too. It's going to be an adventure. Yeah. yeah. How many times has he said it? Where, where are the wins right there? LMU, Pacific, at Pepperdine, you hope, and San Francisco. Those are the four that four. you Obviously, it, it, you hope BYU, to beat St. Mary's at home. Yeah. But, but St. Mary's, by the way, this just in, St. Mary's is up to 22 in the AP poll today. They finally got in. Yeah, can BYU beat and Santa Gonzaga, Clara at home? Gonzaga down to 14. There's only one undefeated team in league, by the way, and it's not Gonzaga. Oh, yeah, no, St. Mary's. The first Saint place St. Mary's coming to Provo as a nationally ranked team. If BYU wins that game, now we can consider five and three in the back eight and going nine and seven and hoping that there's just yeah. mass parity and BYU ends up somehow fourth. But right now, well, that doesn't matter to me. Like, like, just win a game in Vegas and you have a better shot in the quarterfinal than you do, or uh, in uh, that like first round or whatever. Then well, you finish fourth, you don't have to play a day earlier. That's the point, right? Yeah. Uh, so that that, you, that is but the you, but I want to win a game in Vegas. angle. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to win a game in Vegas. Might as well be the five. Fred Warner continues to make waves with his play on the field as the Niners are in the NFC Championship game this weekend against the Eagles. Let's evaluate Fred a little bit here. Where does he rank all time among Cougars in the NFL now? I spent about 30 to 35 minutes right after the question was presented this morning and thought, okay, I'm like, this is tough because Fred is making such a splash right now, and everybody in the NFL is talking about him. Yesterday it was hilarious to see some of the tweets that were coming in, specifically from Emmanuel Acho during the game. Fred Warner's different, y'all. He's different. He's an alien, a monster, a heat-seeking missile, my favorite player in football. Sauce Gardner, who probably is going to be the NFL Defensive Player of the Year as, as a rookie. Fred Warner is really a defensive back playing linebacker. You mean rookie of the year, right? Yeah, rookie. That's yes. what I said, as a rookie. Yes. Player, the rookie of the year. Robert Griffin III. Fred Warner doesn't get enough attention. Best yeah. linebacker in the game. No, he's awesome, man. These are all super validated. Great. But where does it place him in the pantheon of all-time former Cougar greats? Steve Young is at the top of the list. He's a Hall of Famer. He's, He's the only an one. MVP twice in the league, Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl MVP. That, who's going to touch that? Probably nobody ever coming from BYU. Hopefully I, someone does, but that's going to be hard to That's beat. going to be really, be really tough. To, it's a Hall of Famer. Number two is Todd Christensen. People don't remember how incredible Todd Christensen was. Like, he was the best tight end in the game, and he won a Super Bowl as well. And he had more catches than most wide receivers did in the 1983 season. Looking at the entire NFL, Bart Oates, five-time Pro Bowler, multiple-time Super Bowl champion. Those are one, two, and three for me. Fred Warner in at number four right now. And I know some of you are saying, how could you place him above Jim McMahon? I just feel like Fred Warner is right now, in terms of overall NFL player, the way that he is presenting himself as an all-pro, Jim was a one-time Pro Bowler, and he was on a really good Chicago Bears team that had an incredible defense. He didn't and have he played to be a good quarterback there. Running per back se. in the game in Walter Payton, Jim was a good quarterback on an elite team with an elite defense. Fred Warner is an elite player that is elevating his team to be better. So that's why I have him at number four on my list. Yeah, Steve's clearly number one. So I valued the most, uh, like, all pro selection. So Pro Bowls are good, too. That's an all-star nod. All-Pro is legit. Like, you are the best of the best at okay. your positions, right? Um, and then uh, Football Reference has this, this thing that we found, highest weighted uh, career approximate value. So another metric to use. So number one is clearly Steve, no question. If you don't have Steve, I don't think you understand what happened with the BYU players. Okay. In the number two, Todd Christensen. Yes. yes. Two All-Pro selections. That's tied for second most. Five Pro Bowls. Led the NFL in catches. Uh, 1983, tremendous 1986, uh, you know, Super Bowl and whatnot. Number three is Fred. Wow. I, go, I go Fred up wow. to three. Here's why. All pro. 
Uh, two All-Pro selections. Um, that's tied for second with Todd. Two Pro Bowls, considered the best Emma, uh, middle linebacker in the game. He's in the modern era as well, uh, which is interesting. Like, he hasn't had – look at all these guys. They're like 80s guys, right? Um, and then, uh, you know, best defensive player in the NFL ever, uh, Fred on this list. Number four, Bart Oates. Uh, so I'm right there, close. Uh, five Pro Bowls tied for second. 11 years as primary starter. At that, a, his durability at a matters player. a lot to me. That's the most of any yeah. player in the NFL. Yes. I'm not counting Lee Johnson in that. Um, Lee is honorably mentioned on this list for me. I'm counting his Super Bowl championships, too. That matters to me. The durability, Super Bowl titles, like being a, yeah, yeah, being Super, elite on a great Super team. Super Bowl's awesome. I mean, that you got to be on a – there's some luck there of, like, I've got to be on a good team. If you're not the quarterback, like, you're helping that team win, certainly, but it's tough. Um, if you're a great offensive lineman, like, whether you win it to a Super Bowl is not contingent on you. That's oh, a say. center, and I feel like a center carries – Maybe a little bit more responsibility in that position. Okay. On that yeah, line, yeah. If you don't go to the Super Bowl, like, yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, five, I go Vaisek Ahema just because he had an all-pro, and he, his, his durability, his multiple Pro Bowls, he's right there. I can totally see, um, you know, Chad Lewis, uh, Jim McMahon, uh, John Tate, uh, Kyle Van Noy, Kurt Vo Govea. There's been some awesome play. Brett Kiesel, like, there's a lot in that conversation for that five spot. But that four... We had the same four, just one mix mm -hmm. of, yes, Fred has climbed into, for me, number three, for you, number four, one of the greatest Cougars ever. And the all-pro thing is a big deal. The Pro Bowl is awesome as well. Now, remember, only two for Fred at this point. Like, he's going to rack up a few more. But well, and that, that, the and fact we'll that elevate has, him to number three or number two, in my opinion. The fact that he has two all-pro, big time. In, already in five big, years. Big time. Right in in five years, he may have another one or two for sure. Like Fred is pacing for a potential Hall of Fame career here, which is pretty exciting. It's a double question of the day today, as we want you to weigh in on both of our trending topics. Of course, BYU men's basketball in a frustrating position right now. Will they finish higher or lower than fifth place in the West Coast Conference this season? First response in from at Twiggy or Stone on the Twitter machine says, "Quote: Until they figure out the turnover issue." I can't say higher. Since it is pretty deep into the season, I am guessing 16-plus turnovers is going to be the norm for the season. Close quote. I can't agree more. They've shown us who they are. This is that team. Take it for better or worse. But that is who they are. It's not for, it's not for better. Although, BYU is 4-1 when they turn it over 20-plus times. That's, well, that's the better. That's the better. <laughs> right? It's a weird step, man. Where does Fred Warner rank all-time as a former Cougar in the NFL is our second question of the day. Response in from at Cougar Stats, also on Twitter. With two NFL first-team All-Pro seasons, consideration has to be given of whether he's a future Hall of Fame player. If so, he's right there with Steve Young. Just going to require a longer career for Fred. I don't, I don't see any way Fred passes Steve. Like, Fred can get up to number two potentially on this he list. Could pass but he pass Todd. He ain't passing Steve. No, nobody's passed the Steve. As a two-time league MVP. <laughs> Good luck. Like, all you have to do is be the MVP as a, of the league as a defensive player. That's going to be tough. Uh, yeah, so. super simple. And do it twice. Join us for BYU Basketball with Mark Pope tomorrow as Coach Greg Bell look ahead to the St. Mary's game on Saturday. Watch the show tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Up next, the all-time leading scorer in BYU basketball history, Tyler Haas, joins us. Does he think this BYU team finishes better than fifth in the West Coast Conference? Stay with us for more on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
all you men's hoops dreams are flying high. But before hitting the hardwoods of the Big 12, they're shooting to leave their royal blue imprint on the courts of the WCC. Join us for BYU Sports Nation Game Day as we chat it up with Coach Pope on the team's growth, dive deep into player profiles, and keep it real on the Cougs' big dance chances. It's time to raise the spirited Y banner on our final tour of the WCC. BYU Sports Nation Game Day. Tune in, join us. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It is time that we bring on one of our good friends. He is a member of the Countdown to Tip-Off crew, or I should say BYU Sports Station game day crew. All-time leading scorer in BYU basketball history, Tyler Hawes is with us on BYU Sports Nation. And uh, Ty, we were just talking about where we think this BYU team is going to finish in the West Coast Conference. Right now, they're fifth. We're at the halfway point of the WCC season. I feel like this team has shown us who they are. We should believe them. And why, why would we think that they will finish any higher than fifth right now? How would you answer that question? Yeah, I mean, right now, I, I think fifth is, is – I mean, hopefully they can finish fifth. Uh, it was a pretty dark couple of days. Uh, I mean – some of the darkest of the season, I, I would say. Just a tough road trip, um, not competitive. I mean, tough on both ends of the floor. Uh, there's some broken pieces right now. And, I mean, this is a competitive league this year. And for them to finish in the top five, I mean, they're going to really have to turn some things around and, and strap it on. And uh, But it's it's a long way to go. Mark Pope on the postgame show on BYU Radio certainly owned the loss, saying this was on him. They should never, ever, ever, ever use six evers, uh, you know, have a game like that. How much uh, of this is on Mark Pope and the coaching staff versus ownership for the players? Well, I, I mean, Coach Pope is always going to be the first one to, you know, self-deprecate and uh, take the blame, take the ownership. But it's not just all on him. I mean, watching those games, these guys were not ready to play in both of those games. I mean, it got down, I think, 28 to – I mean, got down big early in both of those games, uh, down 10-plus points in both games, and just not ready to go and let guys – Shabazz goes for 30, Tyrell Roberts goes for 20. I mean, just – letting guys uh, get going and get hot. And I mean, they knew coming into that San Francisco game that these guys wanted to shoot threes and just, I don't know, super disappointing that guys didn't lock in. And it, it felt like every time those teams made a run, uh, they didn't bounce back and uh, turnovers were again, a, a big issue. Uh, but, you know, one thing coach Pope said was our hearts are not right. And, and that's on me. And I think, you know, some of that is coaching. Like, uh, that that's always, uh, you know, you got to take the temperature of the team as far as where, you're, where your hearts are. And it's obviously not right. Guys are not playing hard. They're not, they're not locked into what's going on. And when they get punched, they're not responding. And so those are all big issues that, that need to be addressed and need to be fixed. And um, but I don't think it's all on coaches either. I mean, I remember moments in, in my career where, you know, coaches are, you know, bringing the fire every day to practice. And, you know, when you get in these dark spots, it can be very, very intense and uh, ultra competitive in practice, you know, almost going back to preseason practices where guys are like, it's a blood bath in practice. No fouls are called. Like, I expect that to be happening this week. Um, but hopefully there's some guys on this team that rally internally, you know, outside of what the coaches are saying and care enough about the program and, and what's going on to, to rally these guys and be like, we've got to fix this. This is you know, we got to, the, the players are the most important part. And uh, there's got to be some leadership uh, that, and guys that step up uh, internally and, you know, have, have, have whatever meeting and talks that need to happen so that, you know, everything outside a game plan, like your heart and your focus and your fight, th those things have to be a given every night. And, and they just weren't over the weekend. 
Tyler Hawes with us on BYU Sports Nation. Is it a good thing to have a week between games at this point, to sit on the two losses in a row, knowing that St. Mary's is coming in on Saturday? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm putting myself in the shoes of the players, and I know what they're walking into this week. And, for, you know, from their perspective, this is going to be probably their worst week of practice, uh, for sure. You know, my my sophomore year, I can remember we lost in the first round of uh, the West Coast Conference Tournament. Didn't know if we were going to play postseason. We had about seven or eight days in between games. And it was, I mean, you, you're tired, you're beat up. And we had crazy practices that were ultra competitive and fighting. And, you know, coaches are trying to light a fire inside you and, um, no, we'll, I mean, we'll just have to have to see how, how they respond, but hopefully this is a good constructive week, uh, where they can write the ship and have the meetings that they need to off the court, uh, and, uh, and get right. It, it could be a good week. And, you know, we, th this team's so interesting because I feel like they ride the wave of who they're playing. And, uh, I mean, they, they, had Gonzaga beat, had him on the ropes and let that one slip away. And so uh, I could see BYU coming in and, and fighting and, and being in the game, right, in the last seven or eight minutes against the Gales. And hopefully that's the case. And uh, I know I know Cougar Nation and the Rock's going to show up and be there to support. But, I mean, I'm most concerned about the fight and uh, just the feel of those games was was not there. It's tough to only uh, lead for about four minutes on Thursday, didn't lead at all on Saturday. I want to ask you this. Is it time to perhaps shake up the lineup a little bit uh, regarding the starters and perhaps, especially after last week, put Rudy Williams in the starting lineup, or would you keep it the same? You know, maybe. Maybe you shake it up. Uh, after last week and, and the starts that they had in both of those games, um, maybe you do shake it up. And maybe it's a good thing to, you know, write the minds of, of this team and this group um, and some of the young guys. Like, the first, the first four to eight minutes of any game sets the tone for everything. And, and if you don't bring the fight and throw the first punch, then you're, you're climbing out of a hole the whole game. And it, those are just hard things, to, hard things to face. And, you know, Rudy, Rudy brought it in both games. He, he was one of the only dudes scoring. And so I, I could see them switching the lineup up and, and bringing him in. Um, but, you know, if you're not ready to play, then, you know, those guys are going to get less and less minutes. And so uh, I, I expect... I expect some sort of change this week, and, and Rudy might be a, a, a good starting point for that. Tyler, BYU is 4-4 four and four through the first half of WCC play. To go 9-7 and seven and finish with a winning record, they got to go 5-3 and three in the back eight, but that includes two games against St. Mary's, one against Gonzaga, and you got to host Santa Clara, and you still got to go on the road to Pepperdine. I know they don't have a win in conference, but... Firestone Fieldhouse has been a weird place for BYU to play. Is it too much to expect this BYU team to go 5-3 and three and finish with a winning record in conference? Uh, it, it is a tall ask uh, at this point. But, hey, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I've seen bright moments uh, of this team and this year and what they're capable of. And so, I mean, you have, you have a number of home games there, uh, and, and if you can – find a way to take care of business at home and, and you could, you know, steal one against St. Mary's or Gonzaga, which I don't, I don't know we'll ha if that'll happen. Uh, but win the games that you're supposed to, um, I, I could see that happening, Spence. Uh, five and three on the back end. Uh, it's not it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but, you know, considering where the team is at right now, uh, they've got an uphill battle to climb and uh, it, it just gets harder and harder uh, throughout a season because you're getting more and more fatigued. You got more bumps and bruises. And, uh, you know, when, when you lose two in a row uh, or, or yeah, three, 
you know, three in a row, it, it, it's just, it gets tough and mentally it's challenging. And so uh, I, I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I hope uh, the leadership on this team steps up and, and that they can have a good uh, second half to uh, the conference play. Two and four in the last six, not great, but luckily BYU has just a real easy game coming up Saturday against the nation's number 22 team in the AP poll <laughs> and number six in net, St. Mary's. Any long-term concern with sort of how this season is going? Uh, good enough season last year, making the NIT, making a run. Next year in the Big 12, hopefully BYU is better, but, but if not, that's tough. And then that next year, it's year two, hopefully you adapt. Any long-term concern as BYU heads into the toughest experience of its basketball life next year, but also the biggest opportunity? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it'll be interesting to see how BYU finishes this year. Uh, if they continue to trend downward, then, yeah, I'm very concerned uh, about uh, just this group and what changes need to be made. Now, I, I don't think that will happen. I think, uh, you know, guys like Spencer Johnson and Rudy Williams and, and he, I mean, even young guys like, like Foose, who have been, been through a season, like, I expect them to, to turn this thing around and so that they, they learn the lessons they need to to avoid those long-term effects, right? Um, you know, you can't get you can't get used to and comfortable just uh, not competing and not fighting. And you know, it's it's not okay to lose games. Um, but you know, as we've seen, uh, it is really hard to win a Division One basketball game, no matter what conference you're in. Uh, it, it could be any guy's night, and and most nights guys are gunning for BYU. And you know, Tyrell Roberts is the perfect example. I mean, comes in and and shoots lights out. Uh, and and Shabazz, we've had such a hard time guarding Shabazz. But you, I as far as going back to, I'm getting off on a tangent, but. As far as long-term effects, uh, I hope this group can learn the lessons they need to uh, and and continue to grow because they've had some they've had some tough lessons this year uh, and they're learning how to how to win, uh, especially down the stretch and in, in those last six to eight minutes. And uh, you're headed into a, a monster year next year, and you gotta you you gotta learn the lessons you need to to uh, to be ready for that. Tyler Haas with us on BYU Sports Station. Always insightful. He knows how to score the basketball as well. Tyler, thanks for the time, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. When BYU needed a clutch shot and a clutch moment, they had that dude, and they had Kyle Collinsworth, and they had Chase Fisher. Yeah. Like, there were always a number of dudes. I'm looking up, I'm looking to the roster right now, and I'm wondering, and I'm going game after game, typically asking my brother or some a friend, who's BYU going to go to right now? Who are they going to go to? It's not an established guy. Who's You're hoping that's Spencer Johnson. Um, and he certainly uh, can do it. But, uh, yeah, he, he'll probably get a chance. Who's here, the guy the that's going to lead out and hit a shot in is the Is it clutch? Dallin Hall? Is it too much to ask true freshman? We'll see. Saturday night, 9 Eastern. Join us for BYU Sports Station game day ahead of men's hoops taking on St. Mary's. Tyler, Blaine, Spence, and myself will get you ready. Head of the game on ESPN2 and BYU ready. Up next, will BYU be represented on the Women's World Cup roster. Discuss that and much more next. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan, at the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Whether you want to rock your retirement on the court, on the snow, on the waves or in the gym. At Mountain America, we're here to help you get things rolling. Learn more 
at macu.com slash retirement. Mountain America, guiding you forward. about BYU Sports Nation. It's a banner that unites fans all over the world. BYU TV and BYU Radio are all about bringing your family events and games live. On air, online, and on the free apps. It's the next best thing to being there. Connecting your fandom with others across BYU Sports Nation. Download the apps and get exclusive access to analysis and interviews with players and coaches. BYU TV and BYU Radio. The place for all things Cougar sports. Tune in. Join in. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get the content throughout the day, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and follow Spencer's Be Real. <laughs> yeah, for more Joe Burrow content. Okay, that's a lie. He is Jeremy. I am Spencer. It's time to whip it. Cougar Whip Rap presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Follow Steve Young on social media yeah. because he shot a selfie video with himself and Jerry Rice from Levi Stadium prior to the Niners-Cowboys playoff game that looked and sounded like this. Hey, look who I found. Yeah, the GOAT. No, this guy's what, do you, what, do you, what do you have to say about the Cowboys, bro? We don't like the Cowboys. We don't like those Cowboys. Hey, hey look, we got the defense. They're going to take it to Dak Prescott today. Then we got that offense. Well, Brock, Brock should run for president right now. All I know, the last time we saw them, they went down. That's what, that's what I'm saying. You remember that, that one you threw me I in the end zone? I yes. remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> More impressive. Steve's social media trash talk with all I know is the last time we saw them or Jerry Rice's chain. I'm going to give it to Steve because he's really ramped it up here, Jerem. Like he's, he, he has, has taken recently. his social media game to another level, and I appreciate that. Whoever he's hired to do this has really uh, done a good No, he's job. clearly doing it himself. It's great, right? He's filming his own videos. He's staying relevant. I'm going to give it to Steve. It's just a couple of goats out to pasture right there. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Three former Big 12 quarterbacks, including Brock Purdy, who just got that shout out from Jerry Rice, will start this weekend in the NFL Conference Championship Games. Do you take pride in this as a future conference member, or is it concerning in some way? <laughs> oh, that, that, they're that good? Um, I don't take pride yet. We're not no. in there. I'm not like, uh, I mean, it's going to take a sec before we're like, yeah, you know, big yelling whatever uh no it's cool um it's somewhat random right but uh not that Patrick Mahomes is there he's always there you know Texas Tech and then Jalen Hurts of course after Alabama with Oklahoma Brock Purdy's and, the wild card well I mean in two years this is well there's two SEC quarterbacks there. uh come know. on and let's be honest and Jalen Hurts is as much an SEC quarterback at Alabama than he is the one year at Oklahoma it's like two and two <sighs> at Oklahoma uh, he, he was, was pretty, amazing, he was but he was also a national championship winner at Alabama. Yeah. Did he win the Heisman <laughs> at Oklahoma? I'm trying to remember. That's pretty good. Um, no, I'm not there yet with, like, the conference pride with that. He yeah, wasn't in that league yet. I'm yeah. excited about BYU being in that league. I'm more excited about BYU having multiple representatives in conference championship games. One as a head coach and the other as the best linebacker in the game. That's what I'm most excited yeah, that's about. Cool. Yeah. I wish there were more of those. Yeah. Uh, but it's pretty good to have those two. Ashley Hatch had five, uh, has five goals in 15 caps for the United States women's national team. Will she make the World Cup roster coming up in about five months? I think she will. I think she is the perfect off the bench, we need a spark yeah. in the 75th minute type player for the United States yeah. women's soccer team. She's, she typically does something really good when she is in the game. Yeah, she scored a bunch of goals. This is great. But she does so, the, like the majority of these goals are coming when she's subbed in, in limited minutes. Like she's not playing the full 90 or more. In this case, it was a start yeah. and got one. In this case. Yeah. But typically, she's coming in off the bench and doing something special and, and is the spark. And so I feel like she's the perfect, like, yeah, late sub, fresh legs. She's a goal scorer. 
She's an alpha that way. I feel like she'd be the perfect substitute player for this team. The World Cup is in uh, New Zealand and Australia, is it not? She has scored in New Zealand and Australia for the United States national team, including like 11 seconds in one time. It depends how many nines they're going to take because uh, obviously Alex Morgan's the number one. Sophia Smith is the MVP of the NWSL. It's tough to crack those two. Sure. If they take three, she's certainly she's the be, third. Yeah. But the reason that she even started in this game is because Alex Morgan had some tightness before the game. Sophia Smith already had a, a knock that prevented her from even participating. So hopefully she doesn't need some help to get in there, but she's certainly that number three. They need to take, take three, three nines for take her to three. go. And she would become the first BYU player on a World Cup roster. That would be unbelievable. That'd be super cool. To her credit, she's making it a very, very difficult decision for that staff. Yes. And those are two awesome players. She's really good as well right there. Take three. Love that. This weekend at the Memphis, or at a Memphis Grizzlies, L.A. Lakers game in Los Angeles, Shannon Sharp <laughs> got into a verbal exchange. Skip. Not with Skip. <laughs> But with multiple but, members of the Grizzlies yes, team. Including uh, John Stephen Morant, Adams. Yes. Jeez. No, don't go after Stephen Adams. John Morant's dad was also involved. Which former BYU athlete is the most likely to go all Shannon Sharp at a BYU athletic event? <laughs> a few names come to mind that are friends of the okay, program. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Tavernari is number one in my mind. <laughs> if Brian Keel just something, I could see Brian having fun with that. Uh, okay. Those are two that come to mind. I feel like Devon Blackman is a guy that would never Devon back Blackman, He will never no, back down. Be right there, yep. He will never back down from yep. somebody. Yep. And I appreciate that. Someone talked about Jamal or something. Yes, He's like, oh, ah. he yeah, will yeah. absolutely yeah. go after you. So I like that. I kind of like the feisty. You know, as a member of the media, probably not the best play for Shannon. Yeah, Shaw I think it'd be that. weird if, like, you or I did this, like, courtside <laughs> at a basketball game, like, standing up, there's security, like, what in the yes. world? This felt like a PR ploy from Fox to just get some relevance with its undisputed show. If like, anybody else and is the doing issues that, that Shannon's had with Skip, or if whatever. anybody else is doing that on the front row, they're like booted from NBA arenas for life. I know, they're like, oh, you're a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Like, and Shannon we'll Sharp's big personality. Yeah, yeah we'll let yeah. it pass. So watch out for JT or Brian Keel or Devon Blackman courtside this year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's said with all the love in our hearts. We love those the guys. The feistiness we of those guys. guys. It was a nice debut this weekend for Trent Mosier and BYU men's ball. Hey. He had 20 kills in two matches for the Cougars. He joins us in studio next to talk about his rise and maybe the Cougars rise in the rankings this week. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. playground place of business this is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should intermountain health care official medical provider for byu athletics this competition is going to be something else. You have to be able to break through those hard moments when it hurts the most. Whatever you think you're capable of is true. You're a fighter. Hold your head up. You know what you're capable of. We're all proud of you. That's what makes a champion. Let's go! 
Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, a winning weekend for BYU men's volleyball. We love to have you with us in Studio B, and we're also pleased to welcome in one of the stars of the weekend, Trent Mosier of BYU men's volleyball. Trent, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. What's up, man? What all up? all it took doing? was 20 kills in two matches, and now you're here. It was that simple, right? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling after the I weekend? I feel great. It was a fantastic weekend for our team, you know, a good learning experience. The tough Fed Dickinson team, very scrappy, but it was a good learning experience for us. Friday night, um, you mentioned that uh, you know you were ready mm -hmm. um, for this opportunity. Mix yeah. Ramanis has some sore knees. You were ready to go. Mm -hmm. What was it about um, your preparation that made you feel comfortable with that situation? Because here you are, Friday night, making your debut in college, and uh, you played well this weekend. Um, my preparation, you know, like I have a little weird routine I've done since my sophomore year. Like, I get Taco Bell every day before a game. <laughs> I do the hot tub. Either I'm at my, I'm at like a, at my house, yeah. like in a hotel, I sit in the training room, I take a cold shower, and I wear my socks inside out every game. Inside <laughs> out? Yeah. It's a okay, super, I'm going to watch for that now. It's a superstition thing about me. That's what, I, that's what I do. And then I, like, another thing, I just, like, always tend to be ready. Because, like, if I'm, if I'm on the bench, I, like, I, need, I, need, I know I need to go in sometimes. So I'll go in then. That is the most amazing uh, game day routine I've ever heard. You um, just endeared okay. yourself okay. to hundreds of thousands of BYU fans with that game day routine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what are you getting to Taco Bell, by the way? Uh, I order online because it's like a special box you can create yourself. Nice. So I get a, oh. I get a cheesy gordita crunch okay. and a beefy five-layer burrito, like a little chips and cheese sauce for yep. five bucks. <laughs> That's affordable. Yeah, and sometimes I'll get two if I'm really hungry. Sometimes you get two because yeah. you're like a 6'8", uh, you know, young young man. You can uh, afford it, Trent. You don't have to oh, worry yeah. about that. <laughs> Let's get this man to talk about NIL uh, right now. <laughs> they, when, when did this start and why inside um, out socks? And I'd say I'd say my sophomore year. Um, I did it every game. In every game I did that, I kind of played really good. And I did, I did it one, the one game I did not do it was last year in our state championship in high school. And I, I had 27 kills, but we lost in three sets in the state championship. And so I was just like, never again will I never have Taco Bell before Wait, you game. didn't have Taco Bell that day? Nah. Oh. The one day I changed it up. Oh, what? Yeah. Why'd I, you change it up in the I state just, championship? I kind of forgot, I think. And then we just got, now it's a habit. Then we got wiped. I was like, oh, geez. Okay, now, now it's okay. Thing. you played in Cuba uh -huh. with the USA U21 team, North Sega Championships. How, what'd you do? Because there's no Taco Bell there, Trent. <laughs> so, so there I couldn't do that because <laughs> we had to eat the, the pork and rice every meal of every day yeah. at the hotel. Okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah. So the, the karma people, they understand when it's not available? Is, <laughs> that, so. is that how that, is that, yeah. how that works? Karma people? <laughs> <laughs> Who are they? I, the, the superstitious committee? The, I, I don't know. The, the Illuminati the running superstitionists. <laughs> this is amazing. Trent, you've just made my day like infinitely better. That's great. I, I'm looking at those inside out socks. When yes. You play UC Is it Santa a specific Barbara. type of sock, by the way? Same pair of socks, like no, lucky no, no. socks, or just just it's just inside out. Just inside out. But it has to be Nike socks because we wear Nike. Here. Yes, for Nike. sure. Got to represent the brand. Got to represent the brand with the school. Can we talk about the outfit today? We got cowboy uh -huh. boots going on today, right? Um, you know, I'm a big country guy. I'd say from Gilbert A. Z. Yeah, like my parents met country dancing. It's like country country music's been like a big part of my family for a long time. Yep. It's like all we really listen to. So I got these for Christmas, and I've been rocking them ever since. So. You yeah. fit, I think you fit in here. You should go to Spanish Fork and just roll around in a truck. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> That's great. The cowboy boots on, Trent Mosier. With just his... came from Balin Hay. <laughs> it's awesome. This Taco Bell plans later this week. Oh, yeah. Can you just walk us through one more time? The exact is there an order, by the way, too? Uh, I just get I so I get my Taco Bell before everything else. Okay, that starts uh -huh. it. And then I do the hot tub for uh -huh. like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And then I just go freeze to death in the cold shower. Okay. And then I Put my socks inside Dennis out, the socks. and I go. Okay. 30 seconds, cold shower? What are we talking about here? Uh, sometimes, it's like probably like 30 seconds, like two minutes. Sometimes two minutes? There. Yeah. A little Wim Hof. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, I was going to ask you about the jitters that maybe go, get involved with, like, hey, you're, you're in, a, in a bigger spotlight. you, you got to compete for this BYU team, which, you know, has a huge following and a huge viewing in a niche community. Does, does that stuff help calm the nerves? Probably, honestly, because I feel like if I – didn't stick to my little routine. I would have been a little more like, oh, geez, like there's this many people here, like looking around and all scared. But like when I got there, I was like, 
nah, not like I don't really feel that nervous at all. Like I felt like I was at home. And you played really well, and it's your new home uh, mm -hmm. in front of 3,500 fans in the Smithfield House and a big TV audience, and then 4,200 fans on Saturday. What was it like to play in those uh, first two matches for you at home? I thought it was great. You know, like the environment's fantastic there. Like after every single point, it just the gym erupts. It's super loud. My ears start hurting sometimes. <laughs> but like then, like in the middle of the play, like I don't really hear them. I just like zone it out. Yeah, and yep. then like once the play's over, then I hear them all again right in my ears. Yep. Yeah, uh, what, what's it like serving and and uh, you know having to pass? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, obviously, hitting is like your strength. Your strength right now at, at mm -hmm. six foot eight and long. But you had an ace in both matches, and uh, I thought you passed pretty well, which is. Probably going to be the thing as a freshman that's probably the hardest at this level, right? Yeah. Um, the passing is definitely, yeah, it's definitely the hardest, like you said. You know, like coming out of high school, like less than a year ago to like where I am now, you know, the ball's moving at like 20, 30 miles an hour faster. It's like, so I like literally double the time, like like half the time, I mean, to, to pass the ball. And so I kind of just got to be really locked in there. And so it'll take some time to get used to. But What were you most comfortable with most in, the, comfortable? in the game? I'd say serving because like it's just like serving is like it's just my it's like I have all control of it like it's just me back there they have to whatever the other team does is based off what I do so I have the whole control so I thought that was the, the most comfortable thing for me at this juncture early in the week and you're coming off two nice wins the team's undefeated again it's early in the season but you're number 13 in the polls you started the season unranked there's some growing confidence but you get UC Irvine how much do you know about Irvine and there's a little bit of an old rivalry there, and, too. And it's a short week. It's a Wednesday, Friday, you know. So, yeah, how much have you studied about them uh, to this point? Um, so they were they were here when we played McKendry and Lewis, but we didn't play them because we played them this week. And, you know, they're, they're a pretty big physical team. They have a big lefty outside. It's like from France. He's a big physical kid. And then another big outside who serves really, really hard and, like, hits really hard. So, you know, like, Phil Dickinson wasn't as big as them, obviously, but you know, I think I think that match, these matches, these last weekend, they, that was really good preparation for this big week next up. And I've watched some of their film, like on volumetrics, and yeah, it just seems like they just get up there and hit the crap out of the ball every time. Kind of just, I don't know. Great stuff. At some point, when, after a big kill this season, Jeremiah, I want you to say the Taco Bell Tyrant. Yo, okay, yo Kato Taco Bell. <laughs> the Taco Bell Tyrant. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Trent, great to have you with us on BYU Sports Station. Congrats on a great performance and yeah. good luck against UC Irvine. Yeah. We'll give you some of our karma to go along with your superstition. So the karma people can the give karma you the people. goodness. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you. Okay, if you missed any of our BYU Sports Nation interview shows, if you want to watch the men's volleyball matches over the weekend that you missed, maybe see Trent go off. BYUSN.com is the home for all that content. Still to come, the karma people are clearly not on my side the in fantasy people. basketball. I'm contractually obligated to tell you that we will recap the results. Stay with us for more on BYU Sports Nation. Who day? Who day? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. crack wash all you want don't drive dirty you know the passion that the BYU fans bring it is unique the fans they contribute so much to our team and, and help our players kind of get refocused the fans are so close that they feel a part of the team it's really a benefit to our guys they mean everything to our program men's volleyball it is about the fans BYU men's hoops dreams are flying high. 
But before hitting the hardwoods of the Big 12, they're shooting to leave their royal blue imprint on the courts of the WCC. Join us for BYU Sports Nation game day as we chat it up with Coach Pope on the team's growth, dive deep into player profiles, and keep it real on the Cougs' big dance chances. It's time to raise the spirited Y banner on our final tour of the WCC. BYU Sports Nation game day. Tune in, join us. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Subscribe, rate, and review. Another week and another victory for Jerem in our BYU Sports Nation fantasy basketball segment. Congratulations, you won by a mere 47 points. Yeah, I'd like to thank the Academy. Uh, I'd like to thank my parents. I'd like to thank Lauren Gustin. Um, that's yeah. that's the, yeah. she is the golden I'd like to thank Khalil cow, Shabazz. Right? Golden uh, child. Putting up 30 parbs. Again, points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, two on the men team, two on the women's team, and an opponent. And uh, 236, 189. So I'm 7-0 and on the year. Um, that's an eight-week win streak. I'm basically the Brock Purdy of fantasy here. And uh, it's going really well. Yeah, yeah. Frankly, um, I hope that it kind of remains because it's just more fun to talk about when it's like, like, are you going to break the losing streak? Like, there, I feel like it's more relevant. I don't know. I, we did go winner take all in the bowl game. So I won football as well somehow. So you're telling me the final week of the basketball season is winner take all? Is that, is that what you're telling me? Maybe. Because if that's what you're saying about football, maybe. that's what we're doing with basketball. Then. You I'll, I'll give you half the season because it's longer. <laughs> Our questions of the day include this. Where does Fred Warner rank all time as a former Cougar in the NFL? Our elite voice today presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. Paul Makanani Jr. on Facebook says potentially number one non-quarterback in in the future, yeah. but hard to argue that he isn't already a top three Coug all time. Yeah, and in the NFL, we're talking like Fred's uh, BYU career was really good, but he's yeah. not a top three. He's incredible. Like college career, NFL career is where he's baked his bread. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To the men's volleyball match Saturday, lots of new guys, but there was this group of Vegas guys, Jared, Brady, Jackson, Fife, and company who got in there. They've been playing t-ball together, and now they got in at a. That's ball. amazing. Yeah, way way back. Our thanks to today's guests, Tyler Haas and Trent Mosier. Sorry to Dennis, no time. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Kevin Nixon. Go Cougs and go Fred! <laughs>